roadside shooting by police in Oklahoma. Newly released video raising questions about why an unarmed man was shot and killed. ABC's Clayton Sandell is in Tulsa with the moments that were caught on tape. Good morning, Clayton. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Robin. And yeah, those videos are disturbing. And police here in Tulsa tell me they are so concerned by what they see here, they've now asked the Department of Justice to help investigate. This morning, there are many questions over how a man who appeared to be having car trouble ended up shot dead by police. Somebody left their vehicle running in the middle of the street with the doors wide open. After that 911 call Friday night, Tulsa police officer Betty Shelby arrives, finding Terrence Crutcher in the street. She radios he isn't cooperating. Oh, traffic. I've got a subject. Or show me his hands. Minutes later, with at least four officers surrounding Crutcher, his hands are raised, but he seems to ignore their commands. This guy's still walking. Not for Taser, I think. That looks like a bad dude, too. It's hard to make out what happens next. Police say Crutcher makes a move for something inside his car. One officer fires his taser. Officer Shelby fires her gun. Shot fired! Crutcher's family believes the shooting is part of what they call an epidemic of unarmed people of color killed by police. That big bad dude was my twin brother. That big bad dude was a father. Tulsa's police chief now says the 40-year-old was unarmed. Uh, I'm going to tell you right here now, there was no gun on the suspect or in the suspect's vehicle. Crutcher's family says he didn't deserve to die, but that Officer Shelby deserves to be charged. All right, Betty Joe, where are you at? Well, he's got his hands up there for her now. I'm going to hit the recorder. This guy's still walking. They had no following commands. Not for Taser, I think. That's a, got a feeling that's about to happen. That looks like a bad dude, too. To be honest, something. Which way are they facing? Police one, they're facing westbound. Uh, I think he may have just been tasered. Shot fired! Ooh. 321, we have shots fired. We have one suspect down. We need, need to, to get this uh, eastbound closed down if they could, because they're not going to be able to let anybody. Okay. Uh, police one, we're going to need to get eastbound 36th Street North. Actually, we're just going to need. Uh, he's got his hands up there for her now. I right, come on, hit the recorder. This guy's still walking. They had following commands. Not for Taser, I think. That's a, got a feeling that's about to happen. That looks like a bad dude, too. To be on something. Which way are they facing? Police one, they're facing westbound. Uh, I think he may have just been tasered. Shot fired! Ooh! 321, we have shot fired. We have one suspect down. We need to end here. I need to get this, uh... Eastbound closed down if they could, because they're not going to be able to let anybody. Okay. Uh, police one, we're going to need to get eastbound 36th Street, North 36th Street North shut down uh, at Lewis, and then probably back off about three or four blocks. Now is the time for calm. Tonight, Oklahoma police try and ease the tension after a controversial officer-involved shooting that was deadly. Big crowds gathered as the emotional reaction was captured on Facebook Live. So the police did it again, y'all, and the lady is saying she called them for help not to kill her brother, and they shot her brother. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. The crowd contends this is just another case of police shooting an unarmed black man. Police say they're being transparent as possible and are releasing a photo from cell phone video of the confrontation taken by a witness. We have a Angie, that's right. And that shooting took place right outside this taco shop at around 2.30 this afternoon. Now, in the hours that followed, this parking lot was teeming with protesters, some praying for justice, others demanding it, saying in their words, this shooting was unjustified. Deputies equipped with riot gear and canines hold back surging crowds of protesters as El Cajon police leave the scene of Tuesday's officer-involved shooting. 
a scene where the public's anger and confusion at times reached fever pitch. They were tired of this. We just got word that the brother died and they left real fast. So we need to know what's going on. Why are they killing black men out here? In the immediate aftermath of this shooting, a family friend of the victim posted this live Facebook video in which she claims police shot an unarmed, mentally challenged man five times, a video that quickly drew worldwide attention to the confrontation. And they shot her brother. Mm -mm. As reaction quickly poured in, more than 100 protesters gathered in the El Cajon strip mall where the shooting happened, at times holding impromptu prayer circles, and at others expressing their rage and frustration. You have been trained to do this job. Why did you have to kill him? They shot him five times, and he's mentally challenged. You shoot somebody five times, send her mass. You're not trying to stop him. You're not trying to help him. You're trying to kill him. It could have been our son. This couple runs a ministry in Spring Valley. While they did not know the victim, they say it was crucial for them to come come here to show support. All we know is here it is, another black man that been killed again. And um, I can understand their anger, but violence is not the way. The family of the victim himself has a similar message conveyed Tuesday night through their spokesperson, the Reverend Shane Harris. This family represents peace and they want justice, but they want to do, they want to fight for justice peacefully. Now, protesters here tonight who insist this shooting was racially motivated say they are not backing down. They say they are organizing another demonstration, this one outside of the El Cajon Police Department, scheduled for tomorrow at 9 a.m. afternoon two detectives assigned to our intelligence section were driving down the street here and they saw a young man with a firearm or what looked like a firearm in his hand one of our two police officers discharged his firearm at the young man Incidents like this continue to happen primarily for three reasons. Number one, you're not recruiting an officer with the right personality. You have to have emotional maturity. You have to have less of that John Wayne go get him personality and more of the sensitive, empathetic personality. That's number one. Number two, they have to have the proper training. You cannot hold anybody responsible if they're not trained to do the job. Number three, and this is a biggie, you have to hold them accountable if they violate their training. And that's so seldom done. Well, let's now return to the protests in El Cajon, California, where a woman was allegedly hit in the cheek by a rubber bullet from police. Another witness posted this photo showing a huge bruise. Indeed, I believe we can go live to her now. Uh, that's Richelle Washabo, who joins us now live from San, near San Diego there. Uh, Richelle, describe to us what happened to you during the protest. We were just innocent bystanders standing outside of 7-Eleven and they all, all the military police started coming towards us, started shooting at us, started throwing tear gas, started throwing these little beanbag things, which is what hit me in the face. Yeah, so it, it was crazy. We were just standing there doing nothing, minding our own business. What caused the protest to turn violent then, in, in the words of the police? Um, honestly, none of the protesters were even going on when this happened to us. Literally, everyone had kind of given up and died dead from the night. And we were just standing outside of 7-Eleven, you know, just being bystanders. And they all started going after us. 
And they can, start shooting you, and they start spraying. Yeah, can you describe how the police reacted when you were there? Was there already something happening at the time you were there or were you there initially when the police arrived? No, the police had already been there when, when I had showed up. The police had been there for a while. And were they trying they to were disperse the protesters? Whatever. I was just minding my own business and they came up on me and all my friends and shot me in the face for no reason. Were your friends okay? Did anybody else get injured in the unrest? Um, my friend got tear, got tear gas straight in the face. She started vomiting. Paintball. Paintballs. This beanbag stuff is what hit me in the face. Paintball. Yeah, it was a madhouse for no reason. Was we there a warning about, uh, from the police that uh, you may be fired upon oh. if you didn't move? No warning. He warned the protesters, who we were not with tonight at all, by any means. The protesters went their separate ways. We were just standing outside of the 7-Eleven, minding our own business, you know, kind of watching things, and this is what happened. There have been three nights of protests in El Cajon over the uh, police killing of an unarmed black man. Why do you think such incidents keep on happening there? Because our justice system is messed up. Our justice system is so corrupt. Police can't be trusted. The DAs can't be trusted. Nobody can be trusted. Does it All look, of it. Does it look like in El Cajon that day the protests are going to continue? It's a third night, as I said. Do you believe it's going to happen some more? Yeah, Saturday and tomorrow night are going to be crazy. But tonight, we didn't take any part of the protest, and this is what happens. And what do you this think can be done to stop, to stop, to, to not for this to be repeated? Us who shoot at innocent people, just saying, you know, I'm an, <laughs> I was an innocent person tonight who got shot. Is that going to stop anything. you from going out and protesting again, sure. your injury? Not anything. It has fueled the blood inside of me. I'm going to go out there on Saturday and I'm going to show the cops what's up. I'm and you think a, lo a lot of people believe the same as you are thinking the same as you? I hope so, because we're fed up. All of us are. This is happening everywhere, all over the world. And we're sick of it. We're fed up. OK, we've been speaking to Rochelle Warshabo from, uh, from that protest around 20 kilometres outside of San Diego in California, who was injured, as you can clearly see on the screen now, uh, during the protest, hit by a so-called beanbag, which is a term for a police baton round, which is a little bit less harmful than a rubber bullet, but it is, of course, as you can see, causing a lot of damage as well. Rochelle, thank you for coming on the programme. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yes, for more on what's unfolding in Charlotte is former North Carolina State Senator Malcolm Graham. Mr. Graham, good to have you on with us tonight. There's two issues as I see it at this hour, and that is number one, controlling the violence, and also the subject of the videotape. Let's talk about the violence first. What, do you think that the presence of the National Guard is going to subdue the crowd somewhat tonight, and we might see a calmer night this evening? We're, we're hoping for calm and peace in the city of Charlotte, Ed. Um, Charlotte is a great community. The last two nights were very unfortunate. Uh, we believe that a police presence uh, of the National Guards might uh, heighten that type of uh, unrest between the police officers and the, and the civilians. Uh, people have a right to protest peacefully. We're encouraging peaceful po protests, um, but we also want to make sure that our streets are calm and safe in the city of Charlotte. And so any help that we can get from the federal government as well as the state to ensure that I think it's a step in the right direction. Well, the governor has called it a state of emergency and he's called in the National Guard. Was this not the right thing to do? Well, based on what we saw last night, Ed, I, I think it's probably uh, the, the appropriate thing to do. Um, they will be guarding um, uh, infrastructure. They won't be doing any heavy patrolling. Okay. Uh, the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department still is in control. Uh, they are just guarding infrastructure, and so we believe it's appropriate. Uh, it's a responding to what happened over the last two nights. Now, we understand that the Scott family has seen the videotape, and the police chief has commented on the videotape, but it has not been released least. Your thoughts on this lack of transparency, and he is saying that he doesn't want to, uh, say, compromise the investigation and for the protection of witnesses involved that the tape should not be released. Your thoughts on that? 
Well, transparency and accountability is very important at this stage of the game. Not only is it important for the community, but it's important for the officer as well as the victim family. I think everyone wants to know what happened. There are a wide variety of, of stories. Did he have a gun? Did he, was he reading a book? Uh, only the videotape can answer those questions. And so we believe, I believe, that transparency is very important at this stage and that the tapes needs to be released some are, um, uh, sooner than later. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Graham, some are saying that the police chief is hiding behind a law that was passed, but it has not gone into effect yet in North Carolina. The governor signed a law uh, saying that law enforcement could hold back videotapes of instances like this. Uh, and the police chief is somewhat jumping the gun on this and relying on a law that doesn't go into effect until next month. What about that? The law doesn't go into effect until next month, October 1st is when it starts. And again, when you have these police shootings here in Charlotte or Tulsa or throughout the country, one of the things that's required is, is transparency. We need more transparency, not less. I don't believe he's hiding behind the law. I, I hope that he is, is making a decision that he believes is in the best interest of, of the, uh, the community. However, uh, I and many other members of the community in general believe that in order for to bring some calm and, and some peace in our community, uh, that releasing the video as soon as possible is a major step in the right direction. So I disagree with Chief Putney for um, not uh, the, showing the video, um, but I think, uh, you know, the law is the law on October 1st, and it's very unfortunate. It's a step backwards, in my opinion. Former North Carolina State Senator Malcolm Graham. Mr. Graham, good to have you with us tonight. I appreciate your time. Thank you. A state of emergency is declared in North Carolina amid another night of unrest in Charlotte. What started out as a peaceful march in the city's uptown area quickly turned violent. Uh, what started out again uh, in that uptown city area, it basically turned into clashes and it broke out between protesters and police outside the Omni Hotel. You're looking at these pictures right here. Police in riot gear uh, fired off tear gas and flash grenades as demonstrators threw objects at officers. Now, there were also reports of looting and uh, two employees at the nearby Hyatt House Hotel were assaulted by protesters. Uh, one person was shot and is in critical condition. Earlier they were reporting that that person was dead, but we have since learned that is not the case. The Charlotte Mecklenburg police chief said it was a civilian on civilian shooting. North Carolina governor, meanwhile, Pat McCrory issued a statement saying he is sending out state troopers to help the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department. The National Guard and State Highway Patrol are also being deployed and we're hearing that it could take up to three hours just to have the National Guard in place. So people are waiting uh, uh, patiently, but desperately at the same time. The governor commended law enforcement officials for their, quote, bravery and courage during this difficult situation. Now, the protest follows the fatal shooting of 43-year-old Keith Lamont Scott at the hands of police. Here's a picture of him. Police say Lamont was armed and had ignored multiple warnings to drop his gun before an officer opened fire and killed him. But neighbors and family members say Scott was holding a book, not a gun. Don't do it. <laughs> Keith, get out the car. Keith, Keith, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Keith, 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 don't you do it. Did you shoot him? Did you shoot him? Did you shoot him? He better not be dead. He better not be dead. I know that much i know that much he better not be dead i'm not gonna come near you i'm gonna record though i'm not coming near you i'm gonna record though he better be alive because i'm coming you better be alive how about that yes we're here over here at 50 at uh, 50 um, 9453 lexington court these are the police officers that shot my husband and he better live he better live because he didn't do nothing to them he go ain't nobody touch nobody so they all good I know he better live. I know he better live. How about that? I'm not coming to you guys, but he better live. He better live. Y'all hear this and you see this, right? He better live. He better live. I swear he better live. Yep. He better live. He better live. He better live. He better live. Where is... He better live and I can't even leave the damn I ain't going nowhere. I'm in the same spot. That's okay. Did y'all call the police? I mean, did y'all call the ambulance?
We are in Uptown Charlotte where this is day three of protests that have happened after an officer involved shooting. Charlotte has been declared a state of emergency. The National Guard has been called. And as you can see right here in front of me, we have one of many Humvees that are in the surrounding area guarding businesses. Now, a parking garage just like this right here to my right is where you saw a video of a man, a white man, being beaten and dragged across the floor while his pants were being stripped off of his body. Over here, there is a large group of protesters, and that is right in the area where a man was shot in the head. Uh, come to find out, the guy has died. Last night, there were reports that he was in the hospital because he has sustained life-threatening injuries, and he has now died. So these protests have now turned into deadly riots that have taken one person's life so far. We also got information that the family of the man that was killed was brought in to view the dash cam footage from the police vehicle when the shooting happened. This was the flashpoint on a night of protest. A young black man shot in the crowd, critically injured, now fighting for his life. It inflamed the demonstrators, the target of their anger, the police, who were immediately blamed. Murder. The, shot, the police shot the guy that was protesting. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. The police insist they did not fire on any protester. We've been out here a long, long, long time. The evening started with a large, peaceful demonstration. Hundreds from all over Charlotte gathered in a city park. Their intention to mark the fatal shooting of Keith Scott by a police officer a little over 24 hours before. This is not okay. I'm a young African-American male and I want my justice and I'm here to fight for it. I'm tired of seeing African-American men get killed every day. I'm a mother. I'm a wife, I'm a grandmother, and I am. T I, I, I worry if my children are going to make it back home. Hands up! Don't shoot! Hands up! Don't shoot! But as the protesters marched through the streets, they eventually came across a line of police in riot gear. They would go no further. The demonstrators were warned to leave or be arrested. People refused to back away. Police fired tear gas pushing them back. They were met by missiles. This has been the pattern over the last few hours. We suddenly see parts of the crowd rushing away, the police moving in to snatch some of those who have been protesting and then taking them back beyond police lines. This has been going on for a number of hours with tear gas being used to push the crowds back. Many in the crowd appealed for calm, worried their message was being lost. Well, we can't fight in the streets. We can't win in the streets. We can't win in the streets. But their voices drowned out by a continuous angry roar. For several hours, the police continued their tactics. The protesters scattered and then came back. Across the city, fires were reported, windows smashed, roads blocked. The governor declared a state of emergency and he called up the National Guard, the reserve military force. It gives them more people to put on the street to try to restore calm in a city that is deeply divided. Alan Fisher, Al Jazeera, Charlotte, North Carolina.